What's going on, everybody? It's your favorite Auntie Mo, and we are back for another episode review of Power. This is Season 6, Episode 5, King's Gambit. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, y'all. Come on now. Let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and then hit that notification bell so you will know whenever I upload new content. Look here. Now, first off, Auntie want to apologize. I'm listening to you guys. I got some feedback from my last video that the, uh, my music, my background music was a little bit too loud. And I want to apologize to you guys because after playing it back, listening to it, I do realize that it was a little bit loud myself. So I thank y'all so much for the feedback. Thank you so much. Being a new YouTuber to this whole YouTube life, it's important to me to give you guys good quality content. And so the feedback that I get from you guys, I do take that into consideration. I thank you all for taking the time to leave me comments. As any of y'all who have left comments for me see, I try to answer back everybody who comments to me. And so it's important to me, especially when I do get some feedback, that I take that into consideration what you guys are saying. Because I am here to provide you guys with some good quality content. So I, one person asked actually said that they missed the um, old school Mamba music. So I got the Mamba music playing for you, baby. Auntie's listening now. Auntie's listening. But again, I just want to apologize, guys. I know the music was a little bit loud, but I was jamming to it. I'm sorry. I was, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I take my L on that. But again, thank y'all so much for the feedback. I really, 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 truly do appreciate it. But y'all, hopefully y'all are ready for this power review because power was good. This episode was so good. I don't want to waste too much more time on this. Hopefully y'all are ready for the review. I got my Moscato. I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up into it. Moscato hitting. All right, y'all. So it starts off, they're back at school, right? Reek and Evie are in... um. Tyreek's room and they're playing chess. Now, Reek ends up getting a text message from Vincent. Homework due, Lil Nick. What's good? Meaning a product. Because you already know he gypped him out of the last product when he stole Tommy shit and tried to pass it off, right? So, Evie is there. Evie asks the suspect. Evie sees that he gets that text message. She's like, what's up? You need to get that? With her little suspect ass. He like, yeah. She's like, all right, cool. I'll talk to you later. As she's leaving out, she texts somebody, some unknown person. It says, I think competition is out of product. I'll keep an eye on them. Just then, Tyreek ends up texting Vince back saying, all right, cool. I'll see you later. Now, I knew this little heifer. I knew every ass was suspect. I said it. S somebody tried to say in a couple of... um um reviews before no you gotta give her a chance no that little half of Evie is up to something i don't trust her and i knew her ass was up to something keep that in mind though ghost goes and he meets with councilman tate and ramona now ghost tells him that he wants to step back from councilman tate's campaign he's worried about that heckler that called him out the last time about him being a corner boy and he's worried that his presence on the tate campaign will look bad but ramona she pressed she like no you'll be a um you know a good asset to the campaign as a matter of fact the dnc sent me down here because they want somebody that represents the people and represents the community and they think that you'll be a good asset to the campaign as a matter of fact your absence would hurt the campaign a lot more than it would help the campaign now we all know councilman tate that little fool ain't no good he all gung-ho he wants uh ghosts to step away all he wants is his money and his club when he needs to do press conferences that's it other than that he don't want ghosts to be nowhere around his little whole campaign because he already know ghost ass is dirty but again ramona is pressed she like no you need to stay a part of the campaign i'm trying to tell you the dnc they want you on please reconsider please think about it y'all Keep your eye on this Ramona Heifer. I don't trust her. I don't trust her ass. Blanc is meeting with Sax to go over um, the autopsy from Angela's murder. Now, according to the autopsy and, you know, the coroner and all that, the way that James and Angela were facing each other, there's no way that James could have shot Angela and killed her. Plus, he didn't have no gun, um, with no gun residue or nothing on him. Now, Ramona is trying, I mean, not Ramona, Blanca. She's trying to, you know, sh set up the scenario of how the, sh the shooting could have went, right? Now, for a brief moment, Sax is trying to, um 
flirt with her. It was real weird. Like, he was like, perfume smells good. What's that you got on? I'm like, ugh, gasoline? Like, what is wrong with you? It was just real weird. Real, real weird. She wasn't having it, though. I was like, girl, uh-uh. He is gung-ho that he wants this to be ghost. Now, she's even trying to let him know just how this is. There's no way that he could have killed her. But he ain't trying to hear that. You know, this fool is cowboy up for it to be ghost that killed Angela. He could have seen the murder for himself. But he's still dead set that it was ghost that did it. So we're going to see what's going to happen from that. Tommy and Tasha meet up for their little weekly smoke sessions that they have in Tommy's car. Now, she's telling Tommy that she needs some more money. Now that she got this daycare, she wants to be able to wash that drug money through the daycare. Now, he's telling her that Keisha's already doing that through her shop and that's only because Keisha don't want Tommy to have nothing to do with Tasha period and Tasha knows that she's like the only reason why you doing and the only reason why she doing is because she don't want me doing it but Tommy like hey you taught her everything that she knows so I mean shit like what what you want me to do about that Tommy asks if she still has access to Ghost Crib. She's like, what you need to know for? Because we already know. Tommy got it set. He trying to kill Ghost. She like, look here, fool. Calm down. Right now ain't the time to take Ghost out. Chill out. Pump your brakes. I'll let you know when to pull that trigger. But right now, Tommy, calm down. Sax meets up in a weird secluded parking lot area with Dre, trying to get some more information about ghosts. Now, Sax is a hoe. He got Dre's daughter in a car that's like across the way, got the window rolled down just a little bit so Dre can actually see his daughter, but can't get to him like on some old slave owner type shit. It was real weird. So he's like, look here, until you can give me something that I can put on ghosts, you're not going to see your daughter. So Dre tells him that when he was at the club, he saw that Ghost was talking with Jason, a Serbian dude, but he doesn't know why. So he tells him, look here, I'm going to need you to like, you know, get some more information than this that you, you know what I'm saying? I need something that I can use to get you put against ghosts for killing Angela. And just that, that ain't gonna do. Just then, Sax ends up getting a text from Warner saying, get here now. Goddamn, Sax ass gets back to the doggone um, police station. He ends up meeting with Warner and Blanca. Now, Warner tells him, here are a list of OT requests that I got from a bunch of agents that was sent out to Maria Juarez's house. You want to explain to me what the hell this is for? So Warner ends up telling Sax that Maria called him and that Maria wants to change her story. Now she's saying that she actually did see who it was that kidnapped her. Now, Warren is telling, um, now he's pissed, of course, because Sax never said anything about um, Maria saying anything about ghosts. He didn't say anything about him sending agents over there to the house because he thought that ghost was going in to kill her. Now, he does end up telling Warner and Blanca that ghost ends up giving her some money instead. And so now, basically, they saying that Maria is blown as a witness because now she done took money from the person that she's accusing now that she's going to be a witness of. Now, he and, uh, Warner ends up telling Sax that um, Proctor's wife died and that he's on his way over there to Proctor's house right now to question him because Proctor was the one that called in his wife's OD. And of course, Sax is like, well, hey, you know, hey, can I ride with you over there? I won't say nothing. I won't touch nothing. I won't do nothing. That's because we all know Sax is trying to go over there so he can get that little unicorn so he can see what kind of recording and find out what actually the hell went on with all of that. See, this fool Sax Sax gotta go, Sax gotta go. So Proctor chilling at his house with his cousin Benny. Now we all know his cousin Benny is like his right hand man that does all his dirty work. They sitting over there at the house drinking. Now just then, Sax and Warner come and knock on the door. Proctor tells cousin Benny to go hide in the back, keep him and his daughter Lisa Marie out of sight, out of mind. Now, as soon as they come, he lets him in and he's like, look here, ain't nobody told y'all that I'm grieving over the death of my ex-wife. Like, what are y'all doing here? Of course, they there to question him to find out why were you there when she OD'd? How did you get the call? How were you the one that called, you know, her, her OD in? He says that his daughter was actually the one that called and that he, his daughter called her. And so, 
no, his daughter called him. And so he was the one that actually called 911 when she was dying of the overdose. Just then, Sax asked if he can go to the bathroom. Now, at first, Proctor was like, hell no. Nah. I'd have told him, hell no, nah, you can go piss outside in the cup. You can't come up in my doggone house. But Proctor, ho. Proctor lets him go and use the bathroom. This fool snack, a sax, snacks. <laughs> I'm calling him snacks from now on. Snacks ass goes and creeps up in the room, finds the unicorn on baby girl's backpack, takes the unicorn off. Now we all, when he took it off, I was like, oh shit. Damn it, he done messed up. Later on, Proctor goes and he meets with Ghost. He tells him that when Saxon Warner came to his house, they also told him that Maria is now going to testify, saying that she actually seen who the kidnappers were that kidnapped her and that killed Miguel. Now, at first, we thought she was just going to take the money and go about her business. But now we see Maria is changing her story. Homegirl plan is to take Ghost's money and to testify against him that he was the one that killed Miguel. That dog on Maria, already knew you had to watch her goddamn ass too. I already knew it. I already knew it. So Proctor starts getting in ghost head. He like, look here, as long as Maria is breathing, me and you got a problem. Because if she testifies against you, she going to testify against me. That means your son, your wife. Tommy, everybody gonna go down. So he basically letting him know, like, look here, I need you to take Maria out. Watch Pro Proctor. Proctor is in over his head. He doing way too much sneaky shit this episode. Way too doggone much sneaky shit this episode. Just then, um, Ghost ends up getting a text from Ramona saying that Tate bombed the press conference that he has. And now Tate wants him to come back on to help with his campaign. Now we... <laughs> I had a feeling something like that would happen just because Tate is too prideful. He don't want to admit that he, in a way, he needs Ghost because Ghost is the voice of the people from the street. Tate try to act like he all sophisticated and all of that, but these hood niggas don't trust him. So he ended up bombing that press conference or whatever it was that he had, reached out to Ramona so that Ramona could tell Ghost that he bombed it and so Ramona could be the leverage to try to get Ghost back on the campaign. I don't like Tate. Tate ass gotta go too. Tasha's at her daycare waiting on this chick to come and pick up her damn son, right? Finally, she shows up. Some old ratchet hood chick named Epiphany with a blue wig on. Girl, I like Epiphany. She was funny as hell. She was like, look here, my bad. I'm sorry. Tasha's like, look here, girl. You know we closed two hours ago. It's nighttime. I'm sitting up here with your baby like, what the hell? Epiphany is like, my bad. My baby daddy got me blackballed from all the good clubs. I'm out here doing it by myself. Because Tasha tells her, like, look here. You know that's a $100 late fee, right? Like, damn, two hours later, $100 late fee. God damn. But Epiphany, like, look here. The money I made last night, I got to pay rent with. My baby daddy got me blackballed from all the good clubs. I'm out here trying to hustle in my best G-string. I'm out here doing it by myself. If you let me pay double tomorrow for sliding tonight, I sure no appreciate you. Tasha understands. And she like, look here, girl. Go on, take your baby. I'll let you do it. Just pay me double tomorrow. That's fine. That scene was funny. I like the pivot. She was like, girl, appreciate it. I'm going to think about you when I'm out there. <laughs> Like, girl, she is funny as hell. But anyways, Tasha is closing up her shop, right? And she's closing up her shop. Some old sketchy-ass hood nigga by the name of Zeke come walking up on her. He like, yeah, I see your new shop, but you didn't get everybody's approval. You didn't get the hood's approval on this. Basically letting her know, I'm going to need you to pay me $1,000 a week to protect your shop. I sure hate to see your shop go up in flames. Basically, you didn't get my approval to open up your shop. I'm like, what in the Black King Crew Compton is going on here? Tyreek asked her, broke into a damn classroom where he hiding the last little bit of stash of pills that he got left, right? He's got it hidden up in the ceiling. This fool also has a bag of baby aspirin. He's trying to cut the baby aspirin with the real product to pass that off to Vincent. He's looking at him uh, like up under a projector screen so he can see the light like, damn, these look exactly alike, like a dumbass. So he ends up filling up some of the real product with some of the baby aspirin. 
goes and takes it to Vincent. Vincent don't test it out or nothing. So Vincent is like, all right, cool. He thinks it, that it's the real thing. He takes it like it's the real shit, right? The whole time, goddamn Tyreek ass is in the classroom. Abby is hiding out watching him. The whole damn time. Them follow this fool, watching him, done seeing every damn thing that he doing. That damn Evie, I knew her ass was up to no damn good. I knew her ass was up to no goddamn good. Then we see later on, Proctor meets up with Tommy. He's in Tommy's head the same way that he was in um, Ghost's head, telling Ghost that uh, Maria is going to end up testifying against him. If he testifies against him, that he was the one that killed Miguel, that's going to be bad for everybody. Of course, we already know. Tommy like killing people. Tommy do that for fun. He like, all right, where's she at? Where can I find her? That ain't nothing. Later on, we see Tasha's at one. I don't know if she at Neiman Marcus, Bloomingdale, Saks, wherever she at. She trying to return some clothes because she telling the sales clerk, like, look here, as many times as I done shopped from here before, and you see everything has the tags on them, right? And she's talking to the sales clerk. Here come Keisha. Keisha like, oh, Tasha, I thought that was you. Look like you need some help. Keisha like, nah, bitch, I'm good. What's good with you? So Ta uh, Keisha tries to ask on the cool, what happened with Holly? Now, Tasha tries to tell Keisha, look here. I'm going to tell you like I told Holly, don't get in over your head because that's what happened with Holly. She got in over her head and basically she had to suffer consequences. Keisha like, well, that ain't going to happen to me. I ain't going to get in over my head. Keisha got to go. Keisha got to go. Keisha got to go. Now, Tasha didn't say anything about her meeting up with Tommy, although she could have said something to her ass right then and there. She didn't say nothing to her. She just let Keisha think that she was doing something and let her walk off. But, y'all, I'm telling y'all, Keisha ass, she got to go. Proctor's walking down the street, getting ready to walk into his house. Out comes Sax playing a recording that he got off of the unicorn of Proctor letting his ex Lindsay die. Now Proctor like, well, what the hell? You done had a, an illegal bug set up on me? Basically, all Sax leverage is he's trying to use this to get him to say that Ghost was the one that killed Angela. He like, look here, I'll tell you who killed Angela, but you can't be like, you cannot use this against me. If you do, then we need to work out some other kind of deal, right? So he goes and he leaves. Proctor ends up going upstairs where his cousin Benny is there with his daughter Lisa Marie. They both sleep on the couch. He goes and he wakes up Benny. He goes and he talks to Benny on the couch. The whole time, Lisa Marie, we think, is on the couch sleep. Now, Proctor is telling his cousin Benny that Sax just got him downstairs, that he had, you know, he got to let him know, look here, I was the one that let her die. I set her up. I made her think that she failed her bar exam. I made her think that I found somebody new and that I was getting engaged all because I knew she was Week and I knew that she would uh, she would use who would I, I mean how would I know that she would call me as she's getting ready to die and I just so happen to be there not knowing that Sax had a bug set up the whole dog on time so cousin Benny's like well hey you want me to kill Sax Ghost and Tommy because if they all dead hell they can't use you to do nothing uh um what's the name practice like now nah, look here i need you to chill because hell i need you to be out just in case something happened to me i need you to take care of lisa marie now Cousin Benny ends up giving Proctor a gun and like, here, this is insurance just in case something happens. He's like, look here, I can't let Lisa Marie know. She can't know that I'm the one that let her mama die. As he's saying this, baby girl is on the couch, wide awake, eyes opening, listening to everything that they saying. I'm like, damn, Proctor, you stupid, stupid. Later on, Sax ends up coming back over to Proctor's house because Proctor's like, look here, I'll tell you if that means that you're going to get me out of this. I ain't got nothing to do with this. Now, at the same time, back up some. When Proctor was talking to his cousin Benny, he was telling his cousin Benny that he don't want to be no snitch. Like, he don't want to be caught in the middle of nothing, but he don't want to be no snitch at the same time. Now, here it was, Proctor, I thought you was just going to Ride this thing out and be neutral through everything, but you getting yourself caught in deeper and deeper and deeper, right? So when Sax meets up with him later on, Sax is like got this paper. Basically, he wants him to write out a witness statement. He's like, no, look here. I'm going to let you know who it was that killed him. So he ends up telling Sax that Tommy Egan was the one that killed Angela. But Sax ain't trying to hear it. Sax is like, so it was him and Ghost. Proctor's like, no, Ghost didn't have nothing to do with Angela's death, period. He didn't do it. It was all Tommy. 
Once again, sex is like, well, I can't do nothing. I can't help you. Sex is like, well, look here. Our deal still stands. Even if I have to testify in court, I'm going to testify that Tommy Egan is the one that killed Angela. It was not ghosts. But we all know Sax is gung-ho that it's Ghost that did it. Y'all, Sax was pissing me off in this episode. He was pissing me off. Y'all, back in damn Tyreek school, Tasha shows up with the damn Dean. This fool Tyreek done got expelled for selling drugs. Somebody done sent an anonymous tip, told them that he was hiding drugs in the classroom, Avi's ass. And then he also said that uh, the school nurse or the school drugstore said that he was buying a whole bunch of baby aspirin. So you was just, you was dirty. Like you was slipping everywhere, Tyree. You couldn't at least went to the Walgreens or the Walmart and bought some baby aspirin. You bought it right there at school like damn fool for real. So he ends up getting expelled from that. As he's leaving out, he looks at his chest set, and it's a chest piece that's knocked over. Now, I don't know if that was like a little message from Evie, like, checkmate, nigga, I got your ass, or what that was from. But Evie, I knew Evie's ass was up to something. From the minute when they first met, when she was asking him who his supplier was, I knew her ass was up to something. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. So, Tyreek ass. Out of school. Later on, Proctor shows up over at Ghost House with his daughter. Now, he says that he has to testify against a client of his, some crazy-ass client that knows where he lives. He also tells Ghost that his ex, Lindsay, died the day before. And basically, he's asking if he can stay over there so he can be safe. Now, first, Ghost is like, I ain't running no damn witness protection program. Uh-huh. But he like, look here. My ex done died. This crazy ass fool knows where I live. I just need to be somewhere safe. So Ghost agrees and he tells Proctor that, you know, his daughter can stay back there in Raina's room. As Proctor is walking, walking his daughter back there to Raina's room, Tasha ends up showing up with Tyreek. Now Ghost instantly gets pissed like, Tasha, I thought I told your ass that you ain't invited over here no goddamn more. You ain't welcome. She like, look here, but your son is. So Tyreek walks in. He's like, um, what the hell are you doing here? Why you ain't in school? So she's like, well, tell your daddy what happened. Tasha tells uh, Ghost that Tyreek got expelled for selling drugs. Now, Ghost goes over there and tries to charge up Tyreek. Tyreek ass, this fool gonna tell Ghost, get the fuck out. Like, what? I ain't never been more in favor of a young man getting his ass whooped by his daddy than I was in that moment right damn there. Because Tyreek needed his ass whooped for that. He needed his whole entire ass whooped for that. So Tyreek ends up leaving out. Tasha and Ghost still sitting up there arguing. As they're arguing, Pop Proctor ends up walking out because he says he forgot his bag. So Tasha looking like, damn, so Proctor loud here, but I ain't, I ain't cool, whatever. Tasha ends up leaving. Proctor's in there talking with his daughter. He ends up giving his daughter this gift of this little locket necklace, and it's a little chip in it. And now daughter is asking, like, why we not staying over there at Uncle Benny's house? Now, which is true because we all see now Proctor ass is lying. He lying. He, he just lying back and forth. He says that they'll be safer over there at Ghost House than they will be over there at Uncle Benny's house. Now, when he gave her this gift of this little locket necklace, it had a little chip in it, right? And I'm thinking that it was probably some evidence that was on that computer that he got rid of. That computer that supposedly supposedly was holding some evidence that would be against both Ghost and Tommy should they ever try to come for him for something, right? Now, he says that the locket and that little piece of information in there is for her to keep. It's for her to hide all of daddy's secrets so she can hold all of daddy's secrets. Now, I got a feeling we ain't seen the last of that little locket. That little lock is going to come in handy because Proctor ass is sneaky and he's up to no goddamn good and it's going to come back to bite him in his ass. So Tommy and Tasha meet up for their little weekly smoke session that they have in Tommy's car. She tells Tommy that she didn't say anything about when Keisha came over to, you know, when she was at the little department store. She didn't say anything about her and Tommy having met the day before, right? Now, when Tommy and Tasha had met not too long before that, Tommy had offered to give Tasha some money. She was thinking to wash it through her little shop, but again... Uh, Keisha's already doing that through the salon. So instead, he offered to just give her some money. So Tasha was like, on that offer that you wanted to give me some money, like, look here, I'll go ahead and take you up on that. Now, Tommy tells her, I can't help you out no more. If Keisha find out, she gonna be pissed. Now, she gonna say, well, you ain't gotta tell Keisha. He gonna say, well, I ain't finna lie to Keisha. 
Now, Tasha been your home girl. You wrong for that. You steady wrong, wrong, uh, riding behind Keisha ass, which we all know Keisha ain't built for this damn life. Keisha gonna get your damn ass caught up. Now, Tasha tells Tommy, look here, damn, is a coochie that good? You remember what happened the last time you were sprung over female? Let's all not forget what happened to Holly ass. Soon as she brought up Holly, that pissed off Tommy. Tommy was like, well, look here. You can get the hell on up out of my car. He gets pissed off and kicks Tasha out the car because she done brought up Holly. Well, hell, she ain't lying. Goddamn key, she's going to get your ass caught up. I'm just saying. So after he kicks her out the car, Tasha walking back to her shop. Lo and behold, here come hustle man corner nigga Zeke. He trying to get his little thousand dollars that he trying to collect to protect the shop. So he won't burn down. Now, Tasha, I like Tasha. She a hustle one. She was like, look here. I know that you slang dope. I done heard about you. I knows about you. Look here. If you allow me to help you out in your little business, we can both get this money. I'm just saying. So he ends up giving Tasha a couple of little baggies and was like, look here. If you can get rid of this, then I go ahead. I give you something to work with. But um, after you get this, come holler at me. Tasha already knew. Soon as she had the little baggies in her hand, she already knew. I know the perfect little ratchet that I can get to help me out with my little business. Lo and behold, she calls Epiphany. Because she already know, like Epiphany said, she a hustler. She also a scripper. She out here trying to get this money, trying to do it for her and her babies and stuff like that. So Tasha ends up calling Epiphany and it's like, look here, I got this new little business that I'm trying to do. Epiphany like, I ain't been working on damn daycare. I don't like kids like that. She like, no, it's something else that I'm trying to do. I just need your help with it. Epiphany like, damn, girl, I, it is what it is. I'm trying to make this little money. So now, what, Tasha, you finna be slanging dope up out the daycare? For real, girl? I mean, okay, you do you, boo. It is what it is. So, y'all, now is when shit start get crazy. Tommy creeps up into Maria's crib. He goes and he hides in the closet when he hears that they coming through the door. Maria ends up coming in with sex. Now, sex is like, now, why is it that you want to change your statement and what do you want to change your statement to? She says that her blindfold slipped when she got kidnapped and she actually saw who the kidnappers were that kidnapped her and who it was that killed Miguel. Now, once again, um, Sax is trying to let her know, like, look here, it's going to be hard because, you know, we heard that you didn't accept some money. But not only that, we have their lawyer who's also going to testify against them as well. Tommy hears this as he's hiding in the closet. He like, God damn Proctor, I knew his ass was up to something. Well, after that, Sax ends up leaving because he tells her, all right, it's late. I just want you to get some rest. I'll come back later and I'll take a statement from you. As he leaves out, Maria goes into the uh, little drawer that she got and pulls out the money. Because once again, this heifer finna take the money plus testify against Ghost and Tommy. Soon as Sax leave, Tommy comes up out the closet, turns around, makes eye contact with Maria. Maria's like, oh no, no, no. He like, oh, you remember? You saw me, huh? Oh, your blindfold slip, huh? Guess what? Take this with you. Boo! Takes Maria out. Just like that, I was like, damn, Tommy, for real? Goes over there, picks up the money, and walks out. I'm like, damn. I'm everybody. I'm everybody. They don't always see Ramona and Ghost to having dinner. Now, again, Tate was too punk to go and say anything to Ghost himself, so he sends Ramona to try to go and get Ghost to come back on a campaign. Now, they flirting back and forth with each other. It's still something about this Ramona chick I don't trust. I feel like she's up to no damn good, so we gonna keep our good eye on her. But she ends up talking to Ghost and telling Ghost that she wants him to come back on the campaign, right? Ghost says that he'll agree to or he'll think about it, but in the middle of dinner, he tells her that he has unfinished business that he needs to go and take care of, right? So he ends up leaving in the middle of dinner. We already know he on his way to Maria's house. So back at Ghost House, right? Proctor's there. Proctor ends up getting a call from Charlie. He's the bailiff that was there at the Elisa Jimenez trial. He was the one that had that water, that switched out the water that she ended up choking on that took her out, right? Well, he calls Proctor and he tells Proctor that he's worried because people are starting to question him about Elisa Jimenez and that he needs to meet up with him. Where is he at? 
Proctor ends up telling Charlie that he's staying out of his friend's house at Tribeca. He can't meet with him right now. He'll have to talk with him and meet with him later. Don't worry about it. Everything will all blow over, right? As they hang up the phone, we see Charlie is in the back of a trunk. Charlie then looks up. It's one of Tommy's goons. He's telling him, look here. He said he's at his homeboy's house in Tribeca. He didn't give me the address. Are we good? Goon says, I'm good, but you not. You a loose end. Ends up taking out dude that was in the trunk. I'm like, damn. They taking everybody out. So the goon ends up calling Tommy and was like, yeah. So a homeboy said he had his homeboy house in Tribeca. I didn't get the address, though. Tommy says, I know exactly where he at. Don't even worry about it. Hangs up the phone. Tommy ends up calling Tyreek. He like, hey, you at your daddy house? Tyreek like, yeah. He said, who that with you? Just me and some dude named Proctor. He said, all right, look here. This is what I need you to do. I need you to go to the back door, turn the alarm off, keep the back door unlocked. I need you to get the hell on up out of there right damn now. Don't ask no questions. Tyreek like, uh, you come to get my daddy? Because you told me you would give me the word when you was coming to take my daddy out. He said, I ain't coming after your daddy. Do what I said and do it now. Tyreek like, all right, bet. Tyreek hangs up the phone. He getting ready to leave. As he's leaving, he hears some crying coming from Raina's room. He goes in Raina's room and sees that Proctor's daughter, Lisa Marie, is in there. So he like, hey, uh, I finna go get some ice cream. You want to come with me? Lisa Marie like, I don't like ice cream. Just then, I was like, damn, what's wrong with that little girl? She don't like ice cream? Tyreek is like, well, hey, I know I can get some hot chocolate. You want to come with me to get some hot chocolate? She's like, all right, bet, cool. So she leaves. Now, in that moment, I'm like, damn, you don't tell your daddy that you leaving or nothing? Okay. White folks kids. I guess that's what they do. So she ends up leaving with Tyreek. Tyreek ends up going out the back door, turning off the alarm, leaving it unlocked. Just like Uncle Tommy said, I said, oh, shit, it's about to go down. After Proctor hangs up with Charlie, then he calls his cousin Benny, tells Benny to go and check on Charlie because Charlie seemed like he was spooked, right? Cousin Benny is like, well, maybe he just wants some more money or something. I don't know. He like, well, whatever it is, just go by there and check on him. Now, he tells his cousin uh, Benny that he'll call him when he's back in town. He lied to his cousin and told his cousin that he's out of town. Once again, Proctor, you over your damn head. You doing too damn much. Soon as Proctor hangs up the phone, he's staring out the window. He sees a reflection of Tommy in the damn window. Turn around. Him and Tommy make eye contact. Tommy right, you little rat snitching bitch. Tommy start lighting it up. They going wild in go and, uh, ghost condo. I mean, it's the wild, wild west. They shooting back and forth. Boo, 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 boo. It's going crazy. Proctor goes looking for Lisa Marie in Raina's room. He sees she's not in there. He ends up calling Lisa Marie. She picks up the phone. She's like, oh, hi, daddy. I'm with Tyreek. We came to get some hot chocolate. He's like, oh, so you're not here? You're not in the house? She's like, no. Is everything okay? We're on our way. We're going to walk back right now. He's like, no. Look here. I need you to go to Uncle Benny's house, and I need you to stay at your Uncle Benny's house right now. I love you so much, baby. I love you. P.O.P. Hold it down. He knew he was about to die. And Lisa Marie, when she, uh, you can see the look on her face like, damn. He telling me to go to my Uncle Benny house? Some shit about to go down. Baby. Next thing you know, he hangs up the phone. Goddamn. Tommy comes shooting through the door. Proctor's all out of bullets because he got the gun and his cousin Benny gave him to shoot back. Proctor all out of bullets. Tommy comes shooting through the door. They make eye contact. Proctor tell his fool it ain't over. Tommy said, God damn it, it's over for you. Tommy light his ass up. Proctor, DOA, 187. P.O.P. hold it down. I knew something was going to happen to Proctor. I knew something was going to happen to Proctor. He was in way over his head, way over his head, right? Just then, we see Tyreek ends up taking Lisa Marie to Cousin Benny house, right? Now, she knocks on the door. Tyreek is standing across the street. Soon as Cousin Benny opened the door, Lisa Marie just falls in his arms and starts crying. You can see Benny looking like, damn. He already kind of had that look like he already knew something happened, right? So he look, he see Tyreek across the way. 
he give him a nod up like, appreciate that, nephew. Tyree give him a look back like, all right, my nigga, I got you. Soon as Tyree get ready to go off and leave, Vincent pulls up in a damn SUV. He like, Tyreek, we got a problem. We got a big ass problem. They end up kidnapping this fool, Tyreek, taking him in the back of the damn van. Tyreek, oh Lord. Oh Lord. Later on, we see Ghost tries to creep into Maria house, thinking he finna take Maria out. He looks, he sees Maria ass already there, laid out on the floor. The envelope is there, but the money is gone. He picks up the envelope. I'm thinking, he probably thinking like this mofo Tommy. He goes back to his house, sees the house is in a fucking muck. He looking for Tyreek. Fans is there, right? Later on, we see the fans is at Maria's house as well. So Ghost gets in his house and he looking for Tyreek. He like, oh, my son, my son. They end up saying like, um, Proctor's dead. He's here by himself when nobody else here. Then Ghost phone rings, it's Tyreek. He like, it's my son, I gotta go. Later we see Tyreek ends up sending a text message to Tommy. Uncle Tommy, I need you 911. Tommy texts back, where at? He goes, shows up at a location, Tommy does, right? Then we see Ghost shows up at the same damn location. Tommy getting ready to shoot Ghost. He thinking that Ghost set his ass up. Ghost like, man, I ain't set you up. You call me. He like, nah, man, you call me. Vincent like, I call both you mofos. Vincent, we got a problem. Come to find out, Tyreek ass tried to cut my product with some damn baby aspirin. So y'all owe me two mil. Ghost like, man, ain't no damn way my son moved two mil of your product. He said he damn sure didn't, but that's interest. You got 24 hours to pay me two mil or I'm killing your damn son. And the episode ended from there. Y'all, this episode here was crazy as hell. It was a lot that went on. I hope I ain't confused nobody. But look here. I'm fresh out of wine. If it was anything that I missed, comment down below and let me know. If y'all seen this episode, period, let me know what y'all thought about it. Because it was a lot that went on in this episode and I loved it. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And Auntie Mo, we'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.